My name is Ethan Pierce. I am a director of hardware engineering for Pierce Design, and uh, I've been designing PCBs for the last 10 years. Uh, in the IoT industry, PCB, event, PCB designers should be aware that there are new sensors, there's new board materials, there are new interface paradigms that are continuing to come out, and it's your job as a PCB designer to continue to get introduced to new technologies, new materials, new component packages, because all of these are going to be drivers as your organizations and teams are building connected products, whether they are 5G devices, whether they are autonomous vehicles, or whether they are embedded wearables, it's going to be important for you to understand that the technologies are going to continue to be pushed, and you should be aware of the progress around the new vendors, the new vendor materials, and how they apply to the PCB designs. The key factors to think about when you are integrating a sensor into a PCB design. It's really important to think about where the sensor is placed, making sure that from your sensor, where you've got the traces that come out of the package, that you have a, a reference plane underneath those signals, because if you don't have a reference plane underneath those signals, that uh, those waves are going to go somewhere, and unfortunately, they might go into an additional sensor, or you might under experience crosstalk, it's important to make sure that you have a reference plane underneath all of your signals. Additionally, it's important to think about with your product design team, are you doing central compute where the sensors are located closer to the PCB? You might have a sensor that is several inches away and understanding, am I going to uh, integrate an analog sensor and in the transition from where that sensor is placed to the compute, do I run analog traces back to the central compute, or do I run digital traces back to the central compute? It's going to depend on your mechanical structures, your product design teams, what kind of materials, will things experience bending, will they be static? Those are things to think about. And remember that PCB design is an integral piece where mechanical engineering, software engineering, electrical engineering, everything interfaces right when you're designing that board. <sighs> what I've typically seen when people design for IoT applications is not spending the time to work with your vendors and do testing before you go ahead and go to production. Sometimes people will do a component selection and that component will become uh, not available or that component will not meet the requirements. It's important to, during your design cycle, try to de-risk things early on in your proof of concept and your prototype stage rather than uh, committing to a sensor before you've actually validated or uh, not just a sensor, but anything in IoT design. Validating that all the things work and that it's scalable and it's stable prior to going into your manufacturing ramp. This one has definitely bitten me in the past. It's important to, when you're doing your IoT design, think about how long this device is going to be in the field. And when that device is in the field, whether it's 10 years, three years, five years, in addition, it's important to think about what's the usage cycle with, a, with the device. Will a user take it back? Will they charge it? How will they replace uh, the power system and the batteries? And what's going to drive that component selection once you have those inputs is looking at things like leakage current, different stages with your regulators. Every time you go through a switching regulator stage, you're going to lose, lose efficiency and you're going to lose power. In addition, it's important to think about uh, your thermals, doing a, thermal, uh, doing a thermal design cycle, understanding where the device is going to be, how much power is it going to output, especially as there's 
technologies like ultra wideband where transmitters need to be on a lot of the time and consume a substantial amount of power. But it's important to think about power management, component selection, as you are a designer working with the electrical engineers to make sure that the components that are integrated, if they need to enter power states, that there's the correct circuitry that's applied to them, uh, making sure that you have sufficient copper underneath appropriate underneath the components and not doing traces that are they're analog, that are too thin. But at the end of the day, it's important to read the data sheets and do your testing for your devices, and that's going to drive whether or not that device will last in the field based on your, uh, your design requirements. So I've thought quite a bit about this, and the thing that's interesting is as a designer, you're not going to know everything. But what's important to think about with miniaturization is, for the organization that you're working at, what are the design principles and technologies that they've leveraged? And then depending on the next generation product requirements, as a designer, interfacing with different vendors and different uh, vendors and manufacturers, including component vendors, but also fabricators, because as these new technologies come out, you might have a problem set and you might talk to your fabricator and say, well, hey, I need to do this process. You know, I need to do one mil trace in space. Well, there's new vendors out there and fabricators that can do an additive process to actually get down to miniaturization. But it's important to always have a conversation, be as open as you can without revealing the key proprietary information, but have an open conversation with your fabricator and your vendors and make sure to do your due diligence. To circle it all back, it's important to understand you have a baseline of knowledge and work together as a community with the, the vendors and your partnerships to get to the miniaturization goals that your team has. So when you're thinking about scalability for an IoT device, it's really important to think about modularity, how many devices will be in the field, how long they will be in the field, in my experience, when you're building an IoT device, it's important to think about modularity, not just from the context of, hey, I have a module that I want to drop onto a connector on my circuit board that provides cellular or Wi-Fi connectivity. And if there is a new version, I can swap that out. It's also important to think about, as you're designing the board, with the silicon shortage, and scaling, it's important to think about, okay, maybe for a microcontroller or an FPGA, having multiple footprints over the same place in your design, pending that that's, uh, permitting that that's something that your mechanical team will allow you to do, being able to have multiple footprints or more copper where you can place different, uh, different manufacturer's parts that serve the same function is going to allow you to scale. Well, in order to excel, I find that the most important piece is to continue to push yourself with learning, connect with people, connect with other designers, don't operate in a silo, ask your manager if there are other conferences that you can go to. PCB West is a great place to go to. There's a lot of technical content. Um, sitting down with your fabricators, if you can go through a walkthrough, hey, show me your new technology, show me what you're pushing. Any time that you can collaborate and learn from others, whether those are research papers, or those are conferences, or those are just hangouts or happy hours, that's the way that you're gonna push yourself and you're gonna learn new technologies and network and be able to take your career to the next level. Always a hotly debated topic. I feel strongly if you are an IoT company and you're building a product that is open source, it's imperative to also pair that design with an open source tool chain. In particular, the one that uh, has the most, the most availability is KiCad. For a lot of enterprise companies, Altium Designer, 
is the tool that uh, a lot of industries are using. As you get into mill aero and other defense applications, Siemens Expedition is definitely the tool. And what I've noticed is that right now we have this uh, workforce crunch where there are a number of designers who are retiring or uh, frankly just not being able to, to continue to do the work. And we're having this crunch of PCB designers retiring and leaving the industry and there is a massive gap of work for new designers to take on. And it's important to be flexible on the tools that you're willing to use. But focusing for now, if you want to get a jump start, Altium Designer is a great way to learn a tool set that's used in, in an enterprise space. Fusion 360 with Fusion Electronics, that's a great tool if, as you're doing your, your hobbyist designs. Um, that's what Eagle used to be, that's, that's been rolled into. Um, and I always have to give credit to Orcad and Allegro from Cadence. Those are tools that are very popular with a lot of industries, especially in the smartphone industry, um, where organizations are still building on top of Allegro and Orcad, and they're not going to move away from the tool because they've built upon the workflow, the scripts, and a, a process to allow them to iterate and build products. But it's important to understand what's the industry that you want to go into, if it's Mill Aero, Expedition is going to be the tool. If it's more industrial, automotive, you know, commercial, it's going to be Altium Designer. And then even within that consumer commercial, uh, Orcad and Allegro are going to be tools that you'll be exposed to as well. As a designer, when I'm building IoT applications, one of the tools that many of you are probably familiar with is leveraging large language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT. You don't have to exclusively use that tool, but what I found is that it has absolutely accelerated my workflow in terms of manipulating and dealing with data sheets, dealing with user's guides, or even writing software. It's becoming a powerful tool. Now, it's still early, early days in terms of the effective uh, AI tools that you can use for layout, but there are companies like CircuitMind, which allow you to use a block diagram and generate schematics in Altium and get quickly into placement but it's important to stay on top of uh, the new trends. And I found that a lot of the AI models, especially for large language, as you are doing design processing, they're very powerful.